Well, probably most of you know the story about Mussolini back probably in the 30s, maybe early 40s. And he was known for getting the trains to run on time. The reason being, he had the authority to do it. Now, where am I going with this? Well, it's going to come into play. You just listen. Uh, this is not the first time I've talked about this. I talked about this about three years ago when I bought some lumber. And the, what I'm complaining about is that it's called a one by eight, but it's really only seven and a quarter. In fact, right here, it's just a smidgen under a quarter. It kind of goes like this. It's a quarter, seven and a quarter here, seven and a quarter at the other end. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I'd probably be cutting it off anyway, which I will be doing. And it's not one inch thick. It's only three quarters of an inch thick. And people will give me the, the uh, story. Well, the reason it's like that is because when they originally, when they originally cut it, it was eight inches by one inch. Now, if you're going to use that sort of reasoning, why don't you just say, well, it came off a tree that was three feet in diameter, so we're going to call it a one by 36. And they'll say that's what it was. Well, my problem is it's not what it was. It's what it is now. Okay. Let's say, what was the last machine that this board came out of? Okay, well, this is what's known as sanded four sides. So the last machine it came out of was a sander. Okay, <clears throat> so you go to the lumber mill, and I've never been in a modern one. I mean, uh, when I think of a lumber mill, I still picture the uh, tractor powering the blade with a big long belt going like this, you know. Uh, that's my idea of a lumber mill. I'm sure they're a lot better now. Anyway, you go to the lumber mill and you go to the guy that runs the sander and you say to him, can you adjust your sander so that it will sand something to exactly uh, eight inches wide and one inch thick? And he'll say, sure. And then you say, well, why don't you do it? Well, he'll say, uh, if I do, uh, the, the boards that I put through, they're not even gonna touch this, the, the sandpaper. They're just going to pass right through. Well, why is that? Well, they're not big enough. Well, where did, where did this board come from? Well, he says it came from and probably some sort of a rough planer. So you go to the guy that operates the rough planer and you say to him, can you adjust your planer so that it will be just a little more than eight inches by one inch? And he'll say, sure. And so you, you say, uh, well, why don't you do that? He'll say, well, because when it comes out of the kiln, it's, it's less than that already. So then you go to the guy that runs the kiln and you say to him, can you turn out boards that will be a little bigger than the, what the guy at the planer needs so that he can plane them down to that size? And he'll say, well, well, well sure, we can do that. But the, the way the uh, sawyer uh, cuts them, that, that's uh, the way, that, 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 this is the size they are. So you go to the guy that runs the saw and you say to him, can you adjust your saw? You know, and, and I think of like the way I adjusted my jointer the other day, you know, you loosen something and you tap it a little bit and then you tighten it back up. They wouldn't be doing that nowadays. Nowadays they'd probably just key in some digital thing and it would all about be bzz, bzz, and everything will be just right. Sure they can do it. So the guy says, yeah, I can do that. But, uh, the boss told me not to, not to do that. Oh, so you go and you talk to the boss. Well, the uh, boss says, well, the owners of the mill uh, said that they, they, they want it cut to this particular size and, and so on, and so you go to the owner of the mill and you say to him, well, why don't you have it so that it's right? He'll, he'll give you a whole bunch of fancy talk and bottom line will be, well, they make more money doing it this way. In other words, if they can sort of deceive people into thinking they're getting more than they actually are, 
uh, it's kind of like when you buy cornflakes in a box and it's, you know, you open the box and it's, if you were to take everything out of that plastic bag and dump it into the box, it'd probably only half fill the box. You know, it's that kind of thing. You make people think they're getting more than they really are. So you say to them, well, you know, uh, I, I want you to adjust it so that the stuff actually comes out one inch by eight inches. And he'll say, well, uh, I, I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to make as much money. And of course, you being having the power of Mussolini, you, uh, well, now naturally, you, you can't uh, be like in The Godfather where you offer him, uh, uh, make him an offer he can't refuse. But you, what you can do is hit him where it hurts. You say, you know, we're giving you a lot of tax incentives here and maybe we should look into that. And, and maybe we should have the tax man come in and check your, uh, audit your books. Well, suddenly he's going to think, you know, maybe uh, it would be a good idea to, you know, make it right, okay? So the owners of the mill, instead of making $100 million each next year, they're only going to make $99 million. Now, you can see how simple the solution is to this problem. You just vote me in as your ruthless dictator, and I'll straighten out the lumber industry here in North America. Now, I think it's only North America that has this problem. Anywhere else where they, where they sell stuff in metric, they probably don't, you know, try to deceive. Can you get my drift?